Well, Mr. Mashiri here at USM Finch Farm 2018. What are the main reasons for optimism on and off the pitch for the club? Well, I think we had a very difficult start to the season and, and you know, I don't deny it. You know, it was a shock for me. Uh, after the very good season we had last year and the heavy expenditure, expectations were high. The fixture list was bad. We didn't have a proper preseason. You know, we had a tour to Tanzania and then we had the Europa League. But still, the team didn't seem to have a shape. So we had to take action. You know, the team is performing much better. Uh, and I'm comfortable that in the second half of the year, with Balassi, McCarthy, and hopefully Seamus coming back, uh, we'll have a very good second half of the season. So I'm, I'm quietly confident. As you say, there's, it was a challenging start to the season, but with the infrastructure off the pitch and the changes to the team on the pitch as well, it, it's heading in the right direction, Well, I think we've uh, invested quite heavily in infrastructure. And I think what you see is the visible part, buying players, but there is an awful lot going behind the scene to make success sustainable. I think, as in any other business, you, know, you need to identify problems and deal with it. But the infrastructure is sufficiently strong to build on you know, what we've done. So, so I'm, I'm comfortable. And as you say, with that infrastructure combined with the team, now the players coming back, the new signing in toes, and there's reasons to be optimistic. I think performances in many ways are as important as the results. So the first seven games of Sam they were very good. Uh, and I think then we just didn't have the rub of the green, the last minute goal at Bournemouth, soft penalty, uh, Liverpool, but then it will turn. You know, we are happy. I mean, the important thing is the fighting spirit. We are fighting, we have enough quality to do well. You were very complimentary about Sam when he became manager, and as you say, he became the first manager in Everton history to go for seven matches unbeaten. How impressed have you been? with what he's done? Well, I've followed Sam, as, as I told you, you know, at the time of his appointment. He's one of the managers I've followed for many years. I, I read his autobiography before recruiting him, Big Sam. So, so he's a real man, he's a real football. And what you can see is uh, he's, he's a good tactician, but more importantly, he has a tidy football brain. He makes things simple. His instructions are clear. And, and Sam just made the team solid. So in every department, they're better. Uh, and of course, he is significantly helped by Sammy Lee and uh, Craig Shakespeare. Uh, he has a very good team. And one of the reasons we liked him was his team, because he came totally prepared with a strong support team. And you need to look at the whole team, performance, direct, the, the goalkeeping coach. So I, I, thought, I thought he was impressive during the interviews and uh, I'm not disappointed. He's, you know, I'm not really surprised. You know, I knew he would do well. The fact that he's done so well is a bonus. You've spoken many times about the, the need to keep having a competitive squad, hopefully in years to come, to regularly challenge for, for honours when hopefully we're at Bramley Moor Dock. How important is the continued investment to make that happen? Look, you know, we've bought £200 million worth of players, right? We had, I mean, some of those were long term. Uh, Pickford, Michael Keane, at, at very, very young players very expensive, English players. So we invested for the next 10 years. So those were our two long term. We identified the defense was aging. And we wanted to rectify the goal issue, Romulo's absence. And I think the last bit of the jigsaw wasn't completed. And that gave us problem. So, Harvard Lewin 
done an admirable job. So I think, you know, the number of goals, assists, penalties that is created, I think for a lad of his age, is incredible. Uh, but it's just too much l pressure on him. And buying Seng to Son is to take off the load off him so he develop in a, in a proper way. We, you know, we really rate him. Uh, and now I think we're comfortable with saying Toussaint as a focal point, Bolassi back, Sigurdsson, Rooney, we have our own Fab Four. So. And away from the pitch as well, obviously a lot of work to be done with, with Brownlee Moore Dot with the proposed new stadium, but a lot of positives and steps going forward. And there are a lot of positives. I mean, the commercial side is developing well. We've done really well on commercial side um, with the shared sponsorship, with Angry Bear. There are a lot of other sponsorships which are coming in. And stadium, you know, we've made great progress. We have to have a stadium and we will have a stadium. And I think when the building work starts, it's proof of the pudding. So I think we want to get to that stage. But until we get to that, it is at preparation stage, but we are, at, we are progressing well. We've secured the land, which is the most essential. We picked the land, which we thought the fans would prefer. Uh, it's an iconic thing. It's something that Everton needs. We need to have a better stadium. <laughs> and that's what we have to do. And you've spoken very much the long-term ambition of being part of the elite of English football. Is your determination very steadfast in making that happen, despite the challenges of I, this I season? Think, I think the first part of the exercise is, as Sam said, to make the team competitive. So the owner, the board, the fans, the employees are proud of the team. We need to fight. We can't, you know, we just don't go to fill up numbers. I mean, we need to fight in every game. Our home record must be strong. Historically, it's been good. Uh, stadium is a fortress and the design helps us. Um, but I think we need to, we have a multi-year plan. I think we get bumps on the road, but the plan is intact. I think resolutely we go through the plan to achieve and they're big investment everywhere. So an enormous amount of work is needed just to keep the status quo in place. To move above that is extraordinary effort. But it's effort by me, the board, our recruitment, and also the fans, you know, to work with us to understand where we are. You know, I put my hand in my pocket, you know, so I am the end of the chain. But after that, the whole process needs to uh, make sure that the investment is used rightly. And I think we've taken you know, all the steps to make sure we are efficient. We make mistakes, everybody does. The main thing is to learn from our mistakes, avoid them. But no single setback would you know, derail us. I mean, we are on the road, and we'll get there. And like I say, with the infrastructure, with the stadium proposals, with the manager, with the squad now, it's very much optimism for I, th I think I think we are optimistic. So I think there's a big second half for us. With the players coming back, with Seng Tusan, who is a, who's a very, very good striker. I saw him first in Monaco, because I lived there, and. I watched uh, Monaco playing the Sictus. I mean, he single-handedly destroyed them. Could be a flash. <laughs> I don't know, but he looked very good. And I saw the other team in Istanbul. So I followed him and, and, and the coaching staff liked him. So, so I am hopeful. There are not very, there are not a lot of strikers around. So hopefully, We've hit his right. He's got the physique and speed and good left foot, right foot. 
and, uh, and we need a target for Sigurdsson bullets. So uh, I think Sigurdsson's main strength is his crosses. So hopefully <laughs> you can hit his head. <laughs>